What is up, lads, and welcome back to... I mean, Wes, are we calling it the Pez Universe podcast? Who knows at this stage? But yeah, we call it... We call it we call it the Pez Universe podcast still. Um, but yeah, welcome back, lads. Welcome to 2022. Um, cue everyone slagging how I say 20 because I'm Irish. But uh, yeah, I mean it's been a it's been a wild ride over the Christmas. Um, we've had a crazy time with COVID here in Ireland, so we're we just needed a bit of a break. And Wes, I know that you've needed a bit of a break as well. Um, so I hope you had a good Christmas, man. I know you've been talking, uh, you know, during the Christmas and stuff. But just for the lads listening. I hope everyone has had a good Christmas and, and recharged the batteries and stuff um, because it has been a crazy couple of couple of years at this stage. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, so we have decided to kind of, I don't know, Wes, we've decided to branch out a little bit and this is going to be our first episode of kind of a soft launch of a UFL dedicated podcast. Um, so while this episode, we're still going to be doing the Pez stuff. We're still going to be having the Pez Universe podcast strictly dedicated to Pez and eFootball. Um, but obviously, I mean, you know, we, we've got no news at the moment. We've no content. I mean, there's only so much that we can talk about, Wes. And I think that's been an issue me and you have, have kind of had over the last couple of months with recording these is that it's kind of the same chat the whole time, you know, kind of talking about like, oh, they need to do this and this needs to happen and whatever. So. You know, we've got a couple of games coming out over the next few years, and it would be it would be kind of silly of us not to give them a proper a proper try. Um, and we've talked a bit about that. And UFL, obviously, the reveal is tomorrow, so we're going to be covering that. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's mostly been people asking us what our thoughts are on UFL. And instead of having you know a Pez podcast talking about different games, we decided okay, we'll you know we'll branch out and do two podcasts. So. Double, double the, double the <laughs> amount for you guys. But uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it. And if not, we will be back, obviously, with the Pez stuff, um, quite soon as well. So, yeah, Wes, that was a long intro, but uh, yeah, that kind of covers <laughs> I, I it. I thought you were with it. I thought I thought you were with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, for 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 obviously for for those of you who are interested in UFL, great, perfect to have you on board. Of course, we've still got. Of course, the Pez Universe podcast. Um, a, a quick thing for my hands constantly disappearing. I didn't want to <laughs> kind of let you guys in on just how bad my the, this spare room is currently. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of um, in terms of how we are kind of moving forward, uh, and yeah, you're quite right in terms of the the points that were being made and the guests that we could have on and the viewpoints and everything else in between in regards to eFootball. There isn't a lot more that you could do. You know, there's only so many retro hot takes you can you mm-hmm. can do. There's only so many hot takes in general that you can do. And the fact that there is no news at all coming out of Konami or coming out of eFootball, you know, you know, we still, you know, at the end of the day, me and Barry still want to create podcasts. We, you know, we obviously needed a bit of a break um, in between kind of the last podcast and now. You know, the, there was the charity stream that I did. There was the holiday that I took that I needed. There's, you know, the fact that Barry is having to deal with 75 different types of regulation changes in the space <laughs> of five minutes in yeah. Ireland. Um, and and there's the the kind of the, the the mental and physical, you know, kind of take or the 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 kind of the takeaway that that energy can take going into the Christmas and New Year period. So, with all of that kind of being said, we we kind of needed a little bit of a break. And and I'm quite excited to be kind of going through something different than mm. me just completely moaning and complaining and yeah, constantly drearing on instead we've actually got something that we can actually sink a little bit of time into and just take in a different kind of direction mm. and like i said once eFootball comes out with its news once 1.0 comes out once we have tangible stuff that we can talk about that you know this gives us a decent avenue to actually look down and go well actually there are alternates coming to the into the into the market almost uh, you know it, it, as as much as we like to say about you know working the space quite literally ufl are working the space they have a little bit of wiggle room and they are starting to work it to their advantage so mm-hmm. you know i mean i'm intrigued by it i'm interested i think everybody's pe- interest is peaked by the fact that it's free to play and i'm sure we're going to go into that shortly yeah man yeah because we like a lot of people have asked me my thoughts on it and obviously i've given them and had conversations with people but i think having a podcast dedicated to like UFL, we don't know what it's going to be, you know, but like at the same time, there is that whole there, as you said, there is that gap now for them to kind of come through. And I think everyone just wants to play and have like maybe, I don't know, maybe a second option, whether it was Pez and have something else or maybe it's FIFA and have something else um, as kind of an option to to compete there. And 
yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it because, to be honest with you, I just took a massive break off social media, everything over the Christmas. I was telling you that. So I haven't, like, really, like, been keeping up to date with everything. I know, you know, that they have the reveal trailer tomorrow and there's a lot of hype for that. I know a lot of people are not falling for the hype and they're calling it, you know, that they're kind of over-marketing it and uh, they're kind of saying, you know, it's all smoke and no fire. And, like, we're going to see tomorrow, but... I think it was a good idea for me and you to get our thoughts down of the, like what we think is going to happen um, and just have a chat about it. And as I said, if people are interested in listening about it, you know, brilliant. Like, and if they're not, we still have our old regular kind of um, Pez stuff to go back to when, when, when the time comes in the spring, whenever that is. But I mean, yeah, Wes, I mean, other than that, man, like it's just been a difficult time. I think if you are a Pez fan, just to touch on Pez, because this is still you know, people will see this going up. It will still be the Pez Universe podcast. Um, you know, for the UFL one, we'll be doing new graphics and new intro and all that. Um, you know, we have a couple of working, working, uh, working progress names. But working if anyone, titles. yeah, working <laughs> titles. But uh, if anyone has any any suggestions, we kind of have one that uh, we'll we'll unveil uh, soon. But um, I mean, Wes, just to jump into it, man. I mean, like where we're at with with e football at the moment, obviously. The last time we talked, you know, there was no news. There's really been no news since then. There's nothing that has come out, no dates, no plans yeah. as to, you know, this is going to be definitely launching on, you know, March. It's going to be, you know, V1 rather than V0.9.2 or whatever it is. So, I mean, we're kind of in a position, I think, still where we just have to wait, like, you know, and I know that people are fed up of waiting and, you know, they, they don't have to wait and they've probably moved on to other games, you know, including myself. I mean, I'm, I'm playing a little bit of eFootball here and there, um, you know, a couple of games here, a couple of games there. I've played a bit of Pez 2021 co-op a bit again, you know, but I'm mostly playing COD. I'm mostly playing Halo. I'm, you know, playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla at the moment just to have something to do uh, when I do get a spare, a spare chance. But like it is, it is kind of, you know, we're no... We're no better off, I don't think, in terms of people listening to this podcast expecting news or expecting updates because, you know, as we said at the start, you know, uh, of the show, like there isn't anything there. And I don't think there will be anything there until, you know, they said maybe the spring, you know, we might get a bit of news here and there. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think that they have a plan. And the one thing I would say is I think with the reaction that they had, I think that they will take their time now to with whatever that they show i think you know they they kind of rush things and i think that they know that and now i think they're going to say look we're not going to be putting out something until we're very happy with it which i think is the is the right option but again it's hard for people that have been waiting you know what two years for like a next gen focus pez um so yeah i mean that's kind of just to round off the pez stuff i don't know if you've anything to say on that ways before we dive in but yeah, I mean, I mean, what what can we say that hasn't already really been said? I mean, you know, the the, the disappointment is palpable. The the emotion that's there is has almost dissipated. You know, uh, uh, you know, we spoke kind of a lot about, uh, you know, the kind of the the almost meme like state it's become now, uh, where everyone's just not really surprised anymore. You know, the 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 communication or lack thereof from Konami, from Japan, from the UK, whoever it is that's in charge of the communication side of things. It's just become kind of, it's just become a meme. It's just become the, ah, oh, well, do you know what? This is, you know, we're still waiting. We've got no progress report. There's no, mm. here's where we're up to. There's no, here's where we think it's going to land. Here's anything to do with it. And and this whole kind of shutting yourself off is is great in one sense because you're trying to do the whole, you know what, everybody's against us, so let's, let's try yeah, and get like ourselves in the bit. trenches. And instead, you, you're just kind of just alienating yourself even more. And, you know, in terms of market share and in terms of, you know, playability, you have pretty much every content creator for, for, for you know, at least on Twitch, from what I see, from every content creator that I see on Twitch, it's people playing FIFA now, mm. you know, the likes of Sep, the likes of Vern, the likes of, you know, Precision, myself. You know, LB Jenkins. And as you know, tell a lie. No, shout out to Jenkins. He still stayed with eFootball. Um, but you know, your likes of Tembo, LB, all these kinds of players are all looking to FIFA now as a as almost a respite to go. Okay, well, we have something to play. Mm. Um, I just see. I think, I, man, know, as well, not, never, to, I, not not to cut in there, but I do think like that is that is the big talking point. I think, and again, we could 
you know, we are going to be moving on to UFL, obviously, but like there is a talking point there to be with Pez and the eFootball is exactly what you just said there is that like, like gameplay was enough like five or six years ago, I think, but like it has mm-hmm. changed. You know what I mean? It has changed a lot. Like you will log on to, you know, to Warzone or to Fortnite or, you know, to any of these games that are free to play or else kind of going for that casual audience, you know, that you have your diehards, but then you have your casual guys as well. Like you have constant, like a constant bombardment of content, like whether it's new skins, new characters, new crossover events with, you know, with, with eFootball at the moment, like the gameplay, I think that they will get it right. It might take time. I think they will get the gameplay right. But, you know, is the gameplay going to be enough? You know, as you said, it's more of a social thing now where you can log on and you're working towards content. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think that that's the big thing now is that, like, I don't, I don't, I, I, I do stick by it and people might think I'm a bit mad, but, like, they'd be right. But I, I think that gameplay-wise, I think that they'll be okay. And as you're saying there, a lot of the boys have gone over as a kind of a stopgap, maybe. And maybe they're enjoying FIFA and that's, that's brilliant, like, for them. Um, but I do think that that content there is is where it's at now that you have to have more than just you know this game is absolutely like imagine if Konami came out and they just made a game and it was the best football game ever but you could only play as like four teams and it's yeah. like yeah but it's the best gameplay ever it's like it wouldn't matter nowadays because yeah, yeah, yeah. people want more and more and more all the time um, yeah and I'd say even for the even for the people who have crossed over and played FIFA there's still a, a cross section of people who aren't enjoying it but having mm. to play it out of the necessity of, yeah okay. i have i have no football game to play which is where i think the wiggle room is for the likes of ufl and goals to go oh, okay well we can see that there is uh, a section of eFootball fans who are enjoying their game mm. right there's also a section of eFootball fans who are not enjoying their game okay that's fine we've got a part of people who are really enjoying fifa you've got a part of people who are enjoying fifa but only enjoying it for the content and then you've got your other people who are not liking fifa and want something different and those that kind of subsection of fans where you've got your two sets of players who are not enjoying the game but mm. are playing it because they have no alternative to do that's where this ufl and goals and, and whoever else is going to come into the market that's where you should be pitching mm. you know it, it's you know I, I, it's like your political parties you know you have your main two and then you have your offshoot so oh okay well that's where that's where you know that's where you, your niche should kind of sit yeah. But then your niche then becomes bigger because people go, well, hold on a minute, this game's better than eFootball, this mm. game's better than FIFA, this game's better than X, Y, and Z. And it travels then by by word of mouth. I mean, you know, we're going to get into it kind of now, uh, you know, and looking at it, but, you know, there, there are multiple different mediums. Like, you know, one of the things we were looking at before we, we came on was, oh, well, what have you been doing over this kind of lull? And it's, <laughs> you know what, I've been watching Afterlife. I've yeah, been watching movies. Really I've, been watch- I've been watching Netflix. I've been, wa- you know, I've been playing FIFA, yeah, sure. But in terms of like other things, there have been obtain amounts of other things that I have been able to do in this kind of low period of going, you know, I've been a holiday. I've been able to relax. I've been able to just enjoy Christmas and enjoy New Year. Not that mm-hmm. I don't enjoy spending time with Barrick, <laughs> but do you know what? Sometimes, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to hold in the tears here. I'm <laughs> strong, you know? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you aim shots at your co-presenters. It's fine. <laughs> um, but like, the, there's a, there's umpteen amounts of other things that, you know, there are there to do. And I think it comes with age. It comes with, you know, gaming not being the central point of your universe anymore. And mm. instead, it then becomes, oh, okay, well, actually, there's these other things that I've got, you know, to do. I have responsibilities. I have, you know, I have, the, the, you know, my dog that is now nearly nine months old. I have umpteen different mm. things that I can go and do. So for, for something to catch the attention of, say, a casual gamer now, you've got to try a lot harder. Yeah, and definitely. I think with, with UFL, I think they're starting, they're, they're using kind of new age techniques for example mm. in terms of their partnership with west ham which has probably came as a byproduct of them being a, being a partner of uh or at least even a kit sponsor i think at some point as well of hashtag united mm-hmm. which is obviously spencer yeah. owen massive youtuber has grown a club from literally was playing sunday league with his mates is now actually a fully fledged football team that are in i think it's like the ninth or eighth tier of english football mm-hmm. But it's that type of reach that they then have then reached in to go, oh, okay, well, we can see where these points are that we can make these changes. And that's the inquisitive thing about UFL. They're going in a different type of direction, but they're using 
what I feel are new age techniques. Mm. You know, I'm not seeing eFootball partner up with, yes, all right, they'll go and get licenses for Manchester United and Juventus and all the rest of it, but they're not really reaching into those clubs and becoming ingratiated in those clubs. Mm -hmm. Whereas UFL is going down that route of going, well, we'll buddy up with Hashtag United and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll become their kit sponsor. That garners its own attention. You know, heavy use of West Ham in the kind of the opening kind of mm. uh, images yeah, that they've had so yeah. far. You know, use, utilizing that type of imagery. There's, there's, there's ways and means of promoting your game. I think UFL are going the correct way about it, but I think they have to be careful that they don't listen to too many voices too early on. Mm. If they've got a vision, they need to set out a base of a game with its game mode, get that gameplay nailed down first and foremost, then we can talk about the bells and whistles afterwards. Yeah, I think I that agree. ultimately, it, it's, it's going to be gameplay, modes, and content. You can nail those three pillars, you, you're set, because I think that's what, that's what a game... I think that's what a game needs in 2022. Mm. It yeah. needs gameplay, it needs the modes, and then it needs the content to go alongside it. Mm. That's why the games that you mentioned, the likes of Fortnite, Call of Duty... Um, you know, as we said, FIFA. But yeah, granted, their their third pillar is a little bit shaky from time to time, and he's not the greatest of football games. <laughs> but that's where, that's where I think gaming sits nowadays in twenty twenty two. Yeah, no, I agree, man, one hundred percent agree. Because that's where it's at now. And you said it's new, new techniques. Like it's 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 new age marketing. That's what it is. You know, you get in at the grassroots, and you get the influencers and social media. And you get guys that have a voice and that have a, you know, have a reach and a presence, like, to be able to actually, like, you bring them into the fold, you know, like, nowadays, you see, you know, massive brands, like, you know, obviously, 10 years ago, that you'd have those famous ads where Beckham and Zidane and that for Pepsi and stuff. Now you've got, you know, influencers and stuff that have literally become famous from being an influencer. And like it or lump it, I mean, that's just the way the world is now at the moment, you know? Um, and I do think that it's, it's very clever of them to do what they're doing. I think that they've looked, they're saying all the right things. I mean, if I'm somebody looking in and I have, you know, no allegiance towards anything, you know what I mean? If I just want, if I'm just a casual football gamer, which there's a lot of them out there, like the same way as, you know, you play Fortnite or Warzone or whatever, it's pick up and play, you know, after work, you get a couple of hours away from the missus, or she's watching the soaps or whatever, and then you know you just play with the boys or whatever. That sounds very yeah. uh, very sexist, but you know <laughs> what I'm saying is that like you get an hour away from the children or you get an hour away from your your dogs or cats or whatever that you're able to just sit down and go on either by yourself or with a group of mates and just have a bit of crack. Um, that's where they're going. You know, they they have the tagline, you know, fair to play and like everything's going to be fair and there's not going to be pay to win and all this. I mean, they're saying all the right things. Yeah. Um, and that's that's I think kind of the, the only route they could have really went down because as you said, their their target audience is, you know, a mixture of all different fan bases. You know what I mean? Like it's just everybody that that does Pez content or FIFA content is gonna be kind of raising their eyebrow and saying, mm, yeah, I'll keep an eye, I'll keep an eye on Thursday's reveal and we'll see what it's yeah. like. I mean, if it's if it's crap, you know, I'll get a couple of videos out of it you know showcasing how crap it is and we'll make memes out of it if it's brilliant you know that's good for content you know what i mean i think that's the route they're going down which is good um you know for that point of view but for me and a lot of the lads i've been talking to you know the offline players like this is this is basically going to be an online only game like we know that um from what's been announced so far um you know we've seen the partner clubs like we have west ham sporting Shakhtar, Borussia, uh, Gladbach, Monaco, Besiktas, and then Celtic and Rangers were in. You know, Rangers, I think, they're a couple of hours ago oh, they yes. announced it. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. It wasn't that long ago. No. Yeah, and then, you know, you have your ambassadors. I'm reading them here, just in case uh, you see me looking <laughs> over here. I don't know these off my off by, by heart yet. But... The Bruyne is Lukaku, Zinchenko, and Bobby Firmino. Yeah, so you've got... I've kept, my, I've kept my ear to the floor, you see. Yeah, I mean, I, see, that's I why do you, do all the, you do all the research. I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, <laughs> just here for the crack. But like, yeah, I mean, they are saying all the right things. They're doing all the right things from a marketing point of view, which is huge. And I think a lot of gaming companies still haven't like clicked on to that of like the reach of, you know, your favorite streamer who's, you know, like you say, Dr. Disrespect. I mean, he could, you know, he can make your game sink or swim, really, if he goes on or somebody as big as that can go on yeah. and, and, you know, PewDiePie and all these guys that can go on it's and... 
Yeah, it's, all. it's one person. It's one person away from picking up the game without prompting, without your advertisements or whatever, and for them to go, that's actually a really good game, mm-hmm. and then for that to then then dissipate over other people. It then becomes a talking point then because then it's like oh okay well what what are you doing on UFO oh okay well I I do I'm doing this that and the other I'm you know whatever whatever game modes that they can think of you're like oh well I'm you know I'm playing a Ultimate Team clone or whatever the case may be yeah. oh this is what my team looks like and then it becomes a yeah you know, even I even you know even does it with with my or it even happens with my with my friendship group it'll be oh okay well you've got X you know SBC mm. oh well, what did you get out of it oh well I got this. I got this and I got this, and then it becomes a talking point. Yeah, of course. I think what I think what UFL are, are smartly doing is that they're positioning themselves as the alternative, which is exactly what you need to do. Stuff like fair to play, stuff the fact that it's going to be free to play, so mm-hmm. that becomes a direct competitor of free football. Which, whether you like it or you don't, it is the number two football game as of this moment. Yeah, in time, definitely. Yeah. Recording there is there is, because there is no other football games mm-hmm. to compare it to. But it's going after that number two slot, and then it will try and overtake. FIFA. That's that's that's. If I'm UFL's creative director, if I'm UFL's kind of go-to guy, of this is what my plan would be. You take the number two slot, and then you try and take the number one. Yeah. Because you you're going to set your base up to be this is the alternative to the game that was marketed by eFootball. Mm-hmm. This this is that alternative. Then if the rumors are to be believed that that FIFA are looking at or EA are looking at a a free to play mm-hmm. model as well. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, they're crossing into your lane, which then means, oh, okay, well, actually, now we, could, we become a direct competitor to, to EA Sports' yep. offering, whether it becomes FIFA or whatever, thanks to that whole naming rights thing that may or may not come to pass. So then now, all of a sudden, then you're then in a position where you've got three games that are all offering the same thing for the same amount of money. It then becomes a case of which is the better gameplay, which is the better content, and which has the better game modes. Yep. That then becomes the conversation. UFL are positioning themselves in a very smart way here. Like, I'm not going to get it twisted. I, you know, I still am waiting for a gameplay trailer. That's ultimately what's going to win it for me is, okay, let me have a look and see exactly how the players move. Let's have a look at how the game actually plays. Mm-hmm. Let's see what the reactions are like. Let's see whether AI blocking is such a thing. You know, because, again, a massive key issue with FIFA at the moment is literally Kit Pembe, as, as position will happily <laughs> tell you. Kit Pembe, Kit Pembe can play all four positions. Yeah, it seems he can play blindfolded and yeah. still win, right? Mm. It those are going to be the key parts that 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 really sink this. Mm. If if it if it comes to a point where UFL has better gameplay, better better modes, and better content, that's it. It, yep. it then becomes it then becomes the winner by default mm-hmm. because it then has all three pillars of what I like I said, what I think a game should be. Yeah. Um, I'm not expecting yeah. to see those three pillars in the reveal trailer. I'm hoping that there'll be an increased, as they tend to do at the moment. They have quite good communication on social media. Mm. You know, they'll, they, you know, they will take their their lumps from people, as there was the for the reveal of Lukaku, Lukaku yeah. being their ambassador. <laughs> everyone, everyone started to clown. Yeah, and rightly so. Clown, I mean, he didn't look clown, clown, clown the graphics. Yeah. And, uh, but then, but then there was a revision that came out that said it wasn't the representative of the final game. Which is like okay, that's fine then. Yeah. Let, let let us know that it's not the final version, and then we and then we go okay. Do you know what? It's not the final version. It's just a work in progress. Yep. Fine. Then, then we can have this conversation. Mm. We can then look at the gameplay as and when it gets revealed tomorrow. We can take a look at it and go, hey, you know, this this is this is what it's looking like. Mm. You then have a direct comparison to eFootball. You have direct comparison to FIFA, and you can then have that conversation. Like I say, from a marketing standpoint. They have it on point at the moment. Mm. They've not gone after the massive clubs, which is fine. I feel I still feel that they are a super club short at the moment. Mm. You know, Rangers and Celtic have their own very unique pull. The old firm is one of the greatest derbies in world football. Mm. I won't have it said any more or any less because it's absolutely spot on. They've got your West Ham's. You've got your people who are, I would say, if you're in like a tier list, they're kind of like mid-ish tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They're not quite a... They're a Chelsea or a Man City or mm. somebody of that ilk away. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised given their ambassadors. This would be my bold prediction. I wouldn't be surprised given their ambassadors that they might be having a chat with Man City mm. because mm. if you look, they've got Zinchenko and they've got De Bruyne. Yeah, it would make perfect sense to fit in, and it would make perfect sense for somebody to make a pretty big splash mm. because then it then becomes Man City who potentially are going to warp the Premier League this year. I know mm. we're going to touch on pre-war football. Yeah, at some point. yeah. They're going to walk the Premier League 
unless Liverpool have something to say about it. Potentially have got a long run in the Champions League if they can make it stick and have probably the greatest coach of the modern era in Pep Guardiola. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it would make sense for them to position it to go, right, we're, you know, we are sponsored or we are involved with the best team in on the planet. Mm. That that would be their market ability. And again, if you go into a man's you know, Man City's ground and it's got UFL plastered everywhere, it's only gonna take two or three influencers to go, Oh hey, actually we'll go check in football uh, the mm. UFL out. Oh, oh, do you know what? Actually this game plays really well. I'm gonna go and tell my millions of influ- you know, millions mm. of followers. So it would be smart if they did that link up. I'm not sure if that's something that's in their yeah. pipeline. It would be something to link up to and it'd be something that'd be very good. I think the key part from those clubs you listed though was the fact that some of them are ex e football, mm-hmm. or at least it hasn't been explicitly said if they're exclusive to I think they're still yeah, I think they're still I think they're different there's different yeah. tiers of like partnerships. So I think it like in, I, I think it entitles you to different things. So I think Konami is still uh, like more of a major, like a bigger partner to Celtic still. Um yeah. and a couple of the other clubs, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. But. Yeah, because whenever whenever the the kind of the, I think the stuff that was dropped with Rangers earlier, it was just oh, there were you know we're happy to announce a partnership. It's mm. not an exclusive partnership, no, which no. means then that it's uh, it, so so in which case then they're probably yeah. still. And I think that's the way a lot of teams are going now. I mean, like at the end of the day, if you can partner with three games and get three times the money, why would you partner with just one? Exclusive? Yeah, why, why would you? you, know you, what, I mean? why would you so. pigeon, why would you? Why would you pigeonhole yourself? Exactly. exactly. You know, so, like I mean, you're gonna like if you want to be in the game, like it's it's triple the exposure for you know we triple the money unless somebody like EA are gonna say, well, you know, we'll buy exclusive, you know, exclusive. Yeah, exclusive unless unless they get yeah yeah and exactly and I mean and then granted again to touch back on eFootball, you could probably argue and say that they did not do justice to the licenses of Celtic and Rangers. Mm. Yeah, you know, bar yeah. putting their stadiums in the game and bar the what yeah, the player scans and all that, and future and players the, and all that. Yeah, it's just, it just wasn't it wasn't enough for for what what was given. Mm. You know, it took it took them nearly a year to put. If you remember rightly, it took them nearly a year to put you know Celtic Park and Ibrox in the game. So mm. it's like a while, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, it depends me, on what like, they can do and they can't do. I think that's one of the hardest things. I think from what I've been told, it's like one of the hardest things to like work with is like what you can and can't do and how much you need to get signed off on even a player's hairstyle and stuff i think there's like i don't know like i'm only kind of talking without yeah, knowing the full picture but there is there is a lot to it it's not as simple as somebody you know going into edit mode and pez at the moment and changing something like you know yeah. it is as simple as that but not to do it the right way do you know what i mean to have it like licensed to with one of the clubs or your partners yeah. but like wes what you were saying there man like obviously what ufl right like we're in a position now where like I've never lived through a time like this where there's like a new football game on the market because you know like we're young enough that we always had a FIFA and we always had a Pez so like this this is kind of this is exciting I think if you're a football game and fan you know what I mean it's not like FIFA or Pez till I die you know what I mean like that you're like we we obviously like I love Pez I'm not going to say I don't I love Pez I love the community it has its good and it's bad but like I've had definitely more good times. I've met more pe- good people out of Pez, like friends I would consider friends for life now through Pez. So there's always that connection and always that appreciation of, you know, whether Pez was, you know, a distraction when you were like 15 or 16 going through the teenage years and like having a hard time in school or, you know, you go through a bad breakup and Pez is there. You're just grinding masterly from people I've talked to and known their stories without naming names. But like, <laughs> it, there's always like a link between childhood yeah. memories and growing up around it that won't be there for fans now. Like if you're, you know, somebody that's dipping into UFL, you're not going to have any of that nostalgia to draw on. And that, that might be a good thing as well. Um, yeah. I was going to say, cause you're, you will probably judge it harsher. Yeah. In, yeah. In I think so. Cause you're, you're not going to have nostalgia. You know, UFL are not going to have nostalgia to sell their game. They, they're going to have to make a splash in the current market. Mm. Whether that be they properly lean on the free-to-play model, whether they properly lean on the, the content side of things or how they, they can kind of keep their game fresh. Mm. Because as we've said before, with free-to-play models, it's about keeping your game fresh, but it's also about keeping your gamers engaged. Yeah, You know, it's keeping them on the, you know, to... To, to steal the line for the Wolf of Wall Street, it's keeping them on the ferry soil. Mm-hmm. It's keeping them going around and around and around. That's 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 the the critical part of 
say FIFA's appeal at the moment is that yes, all right, the gameplay isn't great, mm. but I can look at the content side of it and go, you know what, that's keeping me engaged. Yeah, you know, Icon Swaps will keep me engaged. Team of the team of the year will keep me engaged. Team of the season will keep me engaged. The the weekly inform team that gets released will keep me engaged. Royals will keep me engaged. Champs will keep me engaged. Objectives will keep me engaged. That's that level that they will probably need uh, yeah. at this point. And, and the same could be said for eFootball too. They're going to need that type of thing where you go, you look at a game and you go, there's actually too much to do. Mm. That's, yeah, that's, that's what, what it is. It's need. overwhelming for, for like a casual. That's, yeah, that's the way games have gone. NBA is the same as well. At the moment. Yeah, you yeah. need it to be at a point where you go, there's actually too much for me to do here. I'm going to need to pick what I'm doing. Mm. That's, that's, that's realistically where I think that any game this year or this this year or even in this era needs to be you know you look at you know like you said you look at nba as an example you look at fifa you look at um you know you look at call of duty you look at anything you need to have that replayability but you need to keep your gamers to the point where they are constantly engaged mm. you know football manager is a prime example in the case of you can sit there you'll be like you know, ah, do you know what? Just one more game, and yeah. by that time, you've you've reached the third season with like <laughs> you know Inter Milan, and you're trying to win your third Scudetto in a row. Like it just doesn't. You you just suddenly realise, oh my god, I've lost I've lost a night to that, <laughs> you know. But that's but that's realistically what what it needs. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not. We're not going to see that in the gameplay review, obviously not. But I think going forward. Yeah, but I think that, I think as well, man. Like we will, like we will, like. A lot of people have asked me, they're like, you know, when you when you saw Pez and when you played it at Windsor, and we keep going back to this Windsor build, it seems like a, it's like a, it's like the Loch Ness monster now, you know, did it or did it? Did it, it pretty much had, it's pretty much just become that, yeah. Yeah, but like it's it's kind of I could see issues, you know, I can see issues even in a like in a clip like this. This what we release tomorrow, in my opinion, if they are going to do in a stream, right, and they're going to be showing raw gameplay, it's either going to be a pre-recorded gameplay or it's going to be live. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be like it live in real time with, you know, two people playing or whatever. Either way, right, even if it is pre-recorded and it's cherry-picked, which is the way most things are done nowadays, like it's just the industry standard, I, you know, we'll still see issues with it. Do you know what I mean? You'll still see clipping. You'll still see those stuff that at the core yeah. you can't hide no matter how good you edit it. Like it's, yeah. and you could see them in Pez as well. Like every year Pez would come out and you'd see something you know, at E3 or you'd see something when you get hands on at, at Gamescom or, you know, when the demo or the beta came out, you'd say, yeah, like, look at this and you'd clip it and you'd send it to the boys or you'd post it on socials. Like, we will see, I think, enough tomorrow to judge whether it's going to be, you know, it's going to have big issues or it's going to be good. Like, the stuff we've seen so far, like, graphically, like, movement-wise, all that sort of stuff, like, it hasn't, like, it hasn't like like stopped me in my tracks to say like oh that looks unbelievable like I don't think that they're going to have that impact tomorrow, but as you said if it's you know if it's like if it's I think a bit better than like you know if it's a solid game if it's a six out of ten like yeah. seven out of ten to start with I think that's probably what they're going for I don't think that they're yeah. going for that, that, you know that should be the entry point that yeah. should be the entry point for for any free to play game you need to have a solid base because mm. you cannot build your house on quicksand yeah. like you can't like you can't make it so that the gameplay is not good enough to keep people engaged because that's where games will fall down that's where it, if and when this you know the eFootball gets updated that's where that's going to fall down yeah. because if it's still not solid to those who are enjoying it right now great if it's still not solid enough to those who then come back and try it yeah you're then gonna have a, a almost a kind of a, a black hole of, of a player base because the player base will just go well this isn't good enough mm. switch click see you do it yeah. or they'll they'll switch to ufl or they'll carry on playing fifa it, it's just gonna be so many games way. coming out to oh, as well like and there's, then, there's then other games coming out like you've said there's there's, there's so many mm. So many things that, and, and even you know, you talk about movies and TV and, oh, and all these other things. Like There's crazy. so many different avenues that people can go now that you know, game games companies should be working ten times harder mm. to keep people's attention. Yeah, you know, I, I I take a look at, for example, with say Cyberpunk, and you had the you know, I, I'll take this back to the point that we were making that you know, at least with Cyberpunk, they have gone. Do you know what? Our games are good enough. We pulled it from the store. We've done all of this thing you need to have regular communication with your fan base. Mm. I, I see that from UFL. I don't see it from eFootball. I don't really see it from from EA. Yeah. Outside of their their direct communication team when they figure out that they've 
not released a Ramsdale into the correct time, so they've then got to go <laughs> yeah. and you know, yeah, probably, compensate yeah. everybody. They've got to compensate everybody for the fact that you know Ramsdale wasn't there, so they have to refund everybody's packs. But it's that communication, it's that link to your community. Mm. You need that link. Like yeah, I think you do nowadays. As I think people as, have changed how they consume games as well, though, man. Like, there's so many games out there so. now, like that. It's like, you know, even if you sit down and and again, the other thing as well, I think, you know, touching back on eFootball is, like, if you if you if you're looking forward to a movie or if you're looking forward to a game, and then you happen to look up a couple of reviews of it, and you know, you see a couple of five out of tens, you see, you know, two out of fives or three out of fives, like, no matter how hard you try, you're going in with that in the back of your head. It's like okay like you know what was that reviewer thinking i really enjoyed this or else like it's not like it's not a fresh look on the game like or a fresh look on a movie or a fresh look on a tv show like you are i won't say influenced by it but you're kind of comparing like the reviews you read to what you're watching in real time without even knowing that you're doing it so like i think a lot of people that like come back to e-football in spring whether it's march whether it's april whether it's whenever it is they come back you know, they're going to have, like, those memes, in like, burned into their, like, mind's eye, where it's like, okay, but am I seeing this? Am I seeing that? Because, like, eFootball, you mentioned there at the moment, like, apart from the lack of response, and, you know, that it takes some games with, you know, it takes, like, a while to turn a player or to get him to do what he wants, compared to, like, the likes of FIFA or even PES 2021. Like, the game, there is some good points about the game. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not unplayable like when i see you know jenkins and a couple of the boys put up clips and stuff yeah i mean the lads they're playing against like defending is is very hard if you don't know how to do it like it's it's pretty impossible with the response times but like there is some good parts to be taken out of it it's just that there's no content there you know like having campaigns like brilliant have campaign you know you've got you know 10 plus goals in five matches like in you can be losing 3-0 and then push on and get two goals. You might lose the match, but yeah. it's still, like, it's a brilliant idea and the concept of it is great, but, like, that's what I think with UFL at the moment they need to, like, be patient with and they need to be judged harshly as well if the game, look, like, if it looks bad, like, I think people need to come out and, yeah. and treat it as if yeah, it's bad. You know, it's yeah, as simple as that, like. Yeah, you have to have the same energy. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's so. no, oh, well, we, we give them a pass. Like, in the sense of, and that's not me saying that we should be going in and absolutely ripping it apart. No, definitely not. Oh, look at look at this. But the same at the same metric, the game has to look good. Mm. The game has to look like it plays good. And then we then need to know when it's then coming out. We then need to know how long it is that we're waiting for it to come out. And then more importantly, what then comes afterwards. Mm. Like I know that the 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 roadmap was ridiculed at the time when eFootball dropped it. Which was standard because it was nondescript. There wasn't here's our target date or here's our dates where this mm. is going to hit. I would love, I would love for there to be some type of communication by UFL where you know you see like a video of I don't know their, their creative director or their director go right. Just let you know, guys, in front of a camera, much like we are here, mm. and for all we know, we could get it at the end of the gameplay trailer tomorrow. Who who knows? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. The point. And that's why there's that anticipation of going. Okay, what are we actually going to see? What are we actually going to see? And then more importantly, how is it going to look? Mm. Because I would imagine that UFL know full well that this gameplay trailer will be scrutinized to the absolute yeah, end definitely. degree. They'll be looking at every single frame because they'll have seen what's happened to eFootball. They'll have seen what's happened to FIFA. And they'll know the scrutiny. And they'll know that anticipation is there. Mm. You know, the anticipation is there for this game because everyone's now looking at it as a as a viable alternative. It's not just an alternative anymore. It's a viable alternative. Mm-hmm, yeah. So I think I think crucially they need to get off on the right foot. And I think from from there they then need to build. They then need to go right, okay, well this is what we've got, but then this is how we're building it. This is how it gets better as time mm. goes on. So the point then where they're at literally at the point of release, it's absolute fever pitch. You've got people waiting to literally spam the expert to download it yeah. and you're going to have loads of different people going right we're going to go on and stream it we're going to create youtube videos for it we're just going to play the hell out of it and that's what they need they need mm. that type of anticipation and i suppose in a weird way they have the anticipation that eFootball had before eFootball dropped its first news mm. on it yeah that's, oh definitely that's, yeah. Where, definitely that's where we're at mm. like if you actually kind of extrapolate it out and look at it the anticipation that is there for UFL is the same type of anticipation that was there 
when the the messy trailer dropped mm. that's that's the anticipation level that we're at now because people mm. are going please don't mess this up please don't get this wrong please 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 make sure that this plays correctly make sure this is good and, and that's the same fever pitch that we were at i'm just hoping that we have a different outcome than when the first trailer dropped for eFootball. Mm. I'm hoping that we get a completely different thing where it goes, actually, here's the UFL trailer. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Yeah. Actually, it's sort of, yeah, there's going to be good and bad, bad with it. There's no doubt in my mind there's going to be good and bad. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. that's a given for me. Like, I'm going to be look, watching it as a fan and then I'm going to be watching it as somebody that would be potentially, yeah, look, is this something that I would like to, you know, do content on? Is this something that I could see myself streaming? Is this something I could see myself like kind of sitting down with a, with a group of friends and, and playing, you know? And like, I think nowadays as well, the, the whole free to play model, like people have kind of gone on about that for a while and they've been talking about free to play and, you know, like, oh, it's free to play. What do you expect? Like that notion I think now is gone because if you look at like some of the most popular games in the last couple of years, like your Fortnites, your, I know Among Us and um, Fall Guys and stuff might have been like, free free like whatever like i know i think fall guys was on only blew up when it went on the psn or uh it was like game of the month or something but like you look at games like that and you look at game pass where i know you're paying a monthly fee but the games are still kind of you know like you're getting a brand new game worth 70 quid every month to download digitally and play it as long as you have your membership right like it's so easy to just delete a game and move on now that like free to play or paying 60 or 70 bucks for the game it's not the same as when we were probably younger, I think. Yeah. Um, that like, you know, I remember and I've often said it, like I remember getting a PS2, like my older brother bought a PS2 and like we literally had about four games for about like three years because we couldn't like, you know, you'd be saving up doing odd jobs around or like getting a job here and there, cutting lawns or like doing whatever you do and doing your chores to get a few, you know, a bit of money together to buy the latest, you know, like Need for Speed or Smackdown or Grand Theft yeah. Auto or Pez. So like, you know, um, Santa Claus would bring you maybe a game or two then every Christmas. So that would be another way of getting them. But like nowadays, it's just like, as you said, the free to play model, like when it works well, like it can compete with like the biggest budget games out there. Do you know what I mean? So like that's where I'd be going with it is that like judge it on what we see. I mean, presentation is yeah. one thing, but gameplay, I think, is 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 paramount for this because you know, if it is a free to play title, I'm expecting content, you know, to be coming if they want to keep people playing. But I just want to see I just want to see the actual threat like actual in game footage. That's yeah. what I want to see. Yeah. I don't want to see a cinematic trailer. I could yeah. do no less than it. We also don't want to see like, I just don't want to see CGI. I don't want to Slow see anything. I just want to see and, Yeah. All I just want to see how the game actually functions. Like in terms of like how it looks on a on a game screen. Yeah. That's all I really want to see. So what are you expecting, man? Just to round this up, what do you what are you actually expecting in the reveal? We'll 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 uh, we'll make a note of it and see who gets anything <laughs> right. Are you expecting like raw footage? Are you expecting a full game? Are you expecting pre recorded footage? Like what are you actually expecting? Given given their their kind of what they've been saying on social media, I I reckon we're going to get a mix of everything. Okay. I think we're going to get. I I I think from from a. Uh, when they say gameplay i mean it could literally be anything um, yeah it could literally be, i wouldn't mind seeing like them taking you through a menu taking mm -hmm. you through kit select and taking you through how the how the formations look and yeah. how the tactics look i wouldn't mind them taking you through uh kind of how some of their tactical switches work i wouldn't mind seeing you know uh, a, a, a whole host of different things i i would imagine that it's probably going to be kind of it's going to be gameplay. It's going to be in-game footage, but probably in a very FIFA style in the sense yeah. of you're probably going to see loads of different shots. You're going to see yeah. skill moves. You're going to yeah. see you're going to see extensions of probably what you've seen in the ambassador kind of announcements of mm. you know like Lukaku taking a free kick or De Bruyne doing a crow turn and then smacking one in the top corner. I'd imagine they're going to try and generate some excitement, which is fine. Mm. But then try and please back that up with a little bit of substance that goes yeah, with it. Some, some stuff think, for all, like yeah. I think, I think hyping it and then not delivering or just delivering bluster, I just don't think it's going to get it done. Mm. Especially with, I think, I can't remember the the, the YouTube the, the Twitter account that I saw that mentioned it, but the, somebody was like, I hope that UFL understand the rabid fan base that they're about to start engaging with because <laughs> Pez or eFootball fan base is something unlike you've ever seen. Yeah. These are the people that try to ride people out of town for the state of 
uh, the the you know the state of people's physic net physics, you know, <laughs> people being rowed out of town because you know, uh, you know, people people's haircuts weren't quite correct at the right time, yeah. or you know, I I just hope they understand that that's the type of video game fan that they are engaging mm. with because you know it means a lot to a lot of people it, in terms of football as yeah, a yeah football is so big now as well as well it's always like, big. It means a lot to people as it is mm. you then try to put your video game in there as well it means a lot to a lot more people so mm. i think that if they if they like you said if they hit like a seven and a half out of ten trailer tomorrow i think everybody will be quite happy and people yeah. will be going oh e-football e in the mud and all this other stuff that tends to go with social media nowadays but I, I'd, I'd like them to to put a bit of gameplay in there, put a bit of menus in there, put a bit of how the UI looks, and, and at least then try and piece something together that looks eerily reminiscent of a football game. Mm. That's my hope. My expectation is that it'll be very FIFA-esque and it'll just be a couple of people smacking balls into hot corners, yeah. and it'll make it look brilliant. Yeah, man. Let's see. Time will tell. Time will tell. But it's an exciting time, I think, for people as well that are just generally interested in football games, you know? Like, you have the Pez, you have the FIFA guys, but then you have a whole brand new, you know, like, customer or audience that are going to want to check out UFL that mightn't have, you know, played Pez or FIFA before to the level that, you know, that we've played it. So, yeah, man, let's see. I mean, we'll be back with another episode, I think, after the reveal. Um, Hopefully, this goes out tonight, which is, yeah, the, the night before the reveal. So, we'll get our thoughts down, and then, obviously, we can see you know, what we think of it, whether we'll be angry, whether we'll be sad, whether we'll be happy. So <laughs> we might go through it and kind of bring in for guys that watch on YouTube and stuff. We might bring in the trailer and do something new where we kind of analyze a couple of bits and pieces. A lot have been asking for that as well. So yeah, I'd be down for that. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it would be right up your alley as well, because we could kind of see things <laughs> that, you know, like we can spot check things and see, you know, like foot planting and all that. I mean, I'm not one of these guys, just to round it off, I'm not one of these guys that, like, it need, It doesn't need to be technically perfect. Like, if I see a bit of clipping here and there, fair enough. Sometimes in games and in video games in general, you need small breakages in the animation for it to flow, you know what I mean? Like, you need, like in NBA 2K, you need a player's hand to disappear through the ball sometimes to get that dunk off that's, you know, an animation or whatever, right? You need things like that. Yeah, it's not 100% realistic. But that's just the way the game is designed. You need that for the flow of the game. Um, but yeah, as you said, I, I agree with you, man. I'm expecting to see a very highly stylized trailer, a lot of presentation stuff being focused on. But I just want a bit of raw gameplay. That's all I want is, you know, maybe yeah. five or six minutes of raw gameplay, even if it's pre-recorded, just a full-on match or a full-on half of a match, you know, and just let us go ham with it then and see, you know, what it looks like on, you know, in 4K, proper, no compression on Twitter or anything like that. So definitely yeah man um let's end it there let's end it there i think there's somebody at the door i hope not the girlfriend because she's ringing me here but um <laughs> no, she's good she's good um but yeah i think there's someone at the door but uh yeah man let's end it there um it's been a nice chat it's not been uh it, you know it's not been too long uh so if people are interested in listening brilliant and we'll be back with the blowout and the, the our thoughts on everything that we do see on thursday um you know i mean Let's see now we might get a 30 second like teaser trailer tomorrow or something and push back. Let's see what happens. <laughs> imagine, imagine. Imagine. Yeah. Like a two Aww. minute, a two minute like introduction. Of furious. City. People would be absolutely furious. <laughs> yeah. But Twitter will be fun tomorrow anyway, regardless of what happens. So hopefully if you are a football loving fan, it will be a good day, you know, to get a third game on the market. Um, in regards to Pez and the Pez podcast, we will be back quite soon as well with one of them where we'll be talking about kind of a little bit different, a little bits of different stuff um regarding e-football and stuff and a few plans going forward so we'll we'll kind of start back up 22 with that as well but for now i've been the midnight kid wes thanks for taking the time man it's been a while but i missed you i missed you i missed the <laughs> podcast but um, yeah we won't leave it so long next time yeah we won't leave to, it so long i need to get I need a, tan to stop on. I a holiday very, very pale <laughs> i'm just saying i need to get a tan because i haven't been on holidays in like years really with i wouldn't i wouldn't class go to scotland just getting a tan I'm yeah sure. well, well we'll see we'll see but um, yeah, man, let's end it there. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. And let us know your thoughts on this as well, if it's a hit or miss and if you something you'd be interested in. If not, let us know as well. We'll take it on board. Um, yeah, either, either way, yeah. let us know, good or bad. Yeah, know. exactly. You know, we can take it. We're big boys. We <laughs> so um, yeah. All right, lads, I'm going to end it there. And uh, we will talk to you in a couple of days' time. Hope you have